You're not frightening me sitting there. You're wasting your time. I'm not impressed. I repeat, I'm not impressed. Go away! Please, go away! Honourable gentlemen, please. Won't you sit yourself down? For a fee, honourable gentlemen. Cross my palm with silver. Give me your hand. Your name is Drake, but you will change it soon. Bakshi. What's the job? Mother Hoa, Oyo! Come closer. Security leak. Bates' first secretary at our embassy here is our informant. What sort of leak? Statistics department. The opposition have exact data of our oil reserves and potential in this area, and this could prove dangerous for whoever gives them the figures almost certainly has access to other classified information. Any suspects? Yes, a Miss Jean Smith works in the department. Apparently a dull girl, possibly not. Why her? Bates has information. Says she's under constant surveillance. What do I do? Journalist. Who am I? John Brown. Where am I? In this hotel. Bates will arrange an interview. When? Tonight. Who with? Jean Smith. Where? Your hotel. How's London? Very wet. Come in. Oh, excuse me. I'm from the embassy. Uh, Jean Smith. Ah. I'm uh, John Brown. Miss Smith. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bates couldn't make it? No, no. He'll be tied up for several days. Yes, and you're his secretary? Oh, no, I'm not his secretary. She's very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I think I'll be able to give you the information you need. I've helped visiting journalists before. Yes. I'd like to sit down. Oh, thank you. Um, may I offer you a drink? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, cigarette? No, I don't. Uh, what uh, exactly is your job, Miss Smith? I'm the embassy statistician. Ah. But I can probably tell you more about the oil situation out here than anyone else in the embassy. <laughs> I hope that doesn't sound conceited. It's uh, just that I have a very efficient filing system for a brain. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sure you have. Where are we dining? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not free this evening. Oh, come now, Miss Smith. I'm sure that Mr. Bates would have joined me, a stranger, alone in a strange place. Well, I'm afraid I've had such short notice. Oh, well, of course, if you, uh, if you have a date. No. To be honest, I'm not much of a night bird. Well, if you haven't got a date, Miss Smith, I absolutely insist. I've no intention of going on the town, but a couple of quiet hours spent over dinner with that filing system of a brain of yours, I think we could have quite a background for my story. Hmm? In that case, I'm at your disposal, Mr. Brown. Splendid, Miss Smith. Nice. But, uh, thank you. How will that suit you, Miss Smith? Graceful extravagance. It's delicious. Um, do you uh, 
enjoy living here? I find it a fascinating country. Wonderful people. There's another side of the coin. Even in this city, there are places where there's dirt, squalor, real poverty. It isn't all like this, you know, Mr. Brown. Really? I'd never have dreamt it. Oh, there I go, lecturing again. No, it's very nice to be lectured by a beautiful young lady. Oh, really, Mr. Brown? No, no. Well, no, just to lighten it up. Oh, why? Were you finding me dull? I certainly not. Why are you um, always on the defensive? Oh, well, um, I will have a little drop. It's very good. Mm. I said, um, why are you always on the defensive? Yes, I heard you. I wasn't aware that I was lacking confidence. Aren't you? You think I am? Well, what do you suggest I should do about it? Well, I suggest that in the future, you say to yourself, I'm an extremely attractive young lady and a clever one, and I shall never be on the defensive again. Are you making a pass at me, Mr. Brown? Because if you are, please don't. Well, if it displeases you, I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, I've offended you. No, 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 on the contrary. You see, I am not backing offensive. I, I think we really ought to get back to business now. Yes, yes, of course. You've uh, given me a clear picture of the background. You've filled me with interesting facts. In fact, I'm up to my ears in oil. <laughs> but you haven't answered all my questions. Well, I've answered all I can. There are facts and figures that I can't give you. Oh, come on, why not? The information you're asking is classified. Oh, Mr. Brown, you haven't... <laughs> That's very funny. Come on, I, I don't like to be excluded, though. You've been trying to pump me. Priming me to pump me. I think that's very funny. Do you? Would you like to dance? Mr. Brown, he got done in the eye. He wanted the facts, but the old pump ran dry. Ah, you must never refer to yourself as an old pump, Miss Smith. Oh, no. I'm a very attractive girl and a clever one. And I'm never going to be on the defensive again. Is that right, Mr. Brown? Right, Miss Smith. Good night. Thank you for a lovely evening. <laughs> I should come out of my shell more often. I really had a whale of a time. Good night, Mr. Brown. John. Good night, John. Good evening. Masood. Uh, please don't let me chase you away, sir. I wasn't expecting you this evening. No, you weren't. But you haven't introduced us. Oh, um, come in. Okay. Mr. Brown is a visiting journalist. Mr. Brown, Masood Belhabis. How do you do, Mr. Belhabis? Your servant, Mr. Brown. So you are here on business. Yes. Uh, to write about our people. Ah, oh, well, not, uh, not exactly. Mr. Uh, Brown's writing a story on oil. Ah, yes, that is an absorbing subject to you Westerners. It appears to be the only interest you have in our country. I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't. And how do you like our beautiful city? Oh, very much indeed. You have seen the area east of the river? No, 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 but uh, Miss Smith has been telling me about it. Uh, perhaps you should reserve your judgment until you have seen the east of the district. Perhaps I should. You're not interested in our social conditions, Mr. Brown. You appear to be quite uncritical. Well, it would be an impertinence to be critical in, uh, in someone else's country. Miss Smith does not consider it an impertinence to be critical. Perhaps there should be more impertinent people. Perhaps there should. Um... Can I offer you a drink, Mr. Brown? Uh, no, no, thank you. I've had a hard day. I, I really ought to be on my way. Oh. There are lessons that we could learn from the West. What are they? Well, there you are, tired after a long day's work, and yet you trouble to bring Miss Smith all the way home. What? Disinterested kindness, Mr. Brown. Now, we would be much too selfish to make such a gesture. Yes, but your people are so selfish, they probably wouldn't even let the poor girl go out on her own in the first place. Yes, that is very true. We are an absurdly jealous people, Mr. Brown. Can I get you something, Masood? No, thank you. I made myself some coffee whilst I was waiting. Ah, um, say so goodnight. Have you a car? Uh, no, no, I'll pick up a taxi. No, no, I will drive you. I will consider it an honor. 
Well, that solves that little problem, doesn't it? Good night, Miss Smith. Good night, Mr. Brown. Good night, Masood. Will I see you tomorrow? I'm not sure about that. Good night. Good night. Smith is a delightful young lady, is she not? Yes, delightful. You like her? Well, I've only met her this once. She seems very likable. You will be seeing her again? Perhaps. I think that would be a mistake, Mr. Brown. You do? Yes, I do. Ah! Yes, uh, rather interesting what you were saying uh, just now, Mr. Bellavis. Uh, why do you think it would be a mistake? You are a visitor to our country, Mr. Brown. You must understand that we have a very highly developed sense of hospitality. I feel it my duty to protect you. I should not like to see you make a mistake. No, I'm grateful for your concern, but I assure you I have no intention of making a mistake. Yes, I'm delighted to hear you say that. I shall convey your apologies to Miss Smith and tell her that you regret that you will not be able to see her again. No, I wouldn't do that, Mr. Bill Abbas. That would have frightened me. But it didn't. No, because I know that apart from a highly developed sense of hospitality, you also have a highly developed sense of self-preservation. Is it? John Brown. Oh, just a minute. Good evening, Mr. Brown. Come in. Thank you. May I uh, call the embassy, but you've left. Yes, I just got back. How's the story going? I'd like to ask a few more questions, if you can spare the time. But of course. Would you like a drink? No, no, fine. Oh, I can only offer you sherry. That's fine, fine, thanks. Masood get you home safely? Yes, yes, indeed. Didn't you expect him to? That old car of his, he drives too fast in it. <laughs> How did you two get on? Fine. Fine. It's very interesting. Yes, fascinating. Have you known him uh, long? Oh, about a year. Yes. Uh, why did you think we wouldn't get on? Did I give that impression? I thought so. I didn't intend to. Shall we sit down? <laughs> well, uh, guess to better times. I don't understand you, Mr. Brown. Well, it's just a toast. Oh, good luck. Yes. Yes, mm, Masood is a man with a mission. A dedicator? Very much so. Mm. He has a strong social sense. Yeah. Unfortunately, he has no sense for material things. <laughs> Sometimes he forgets to eat for a day at a time. And no money. But he hasn't time for that. It's hard on his family. He's not married. Just as well. Oh, Mr. Brown, now you're being cynical. If you knew him as well as I did, you'd understand him better. Yes, I'm sure I would. Did you have a pleasant day? Oh, a lazy one. I just mooched around the town taking photographs. You're a photographer? In an amateur way. Would you like to see them? Yes. 
Yes, with this one I um, took outside the British Embassy. I used a, a telephoto lens. This one was taken outside the British Club. We were having lunch there at the time. And this one, uh, just outside your apartment here. from London to talk to you, Miss Smith. Why are you so frightened? Who wouldn't be? You say you're a photographer and then you show me those. You say you've come out here to speak to me. Who is that man? I've no idea. Who's behind you? Who's keeping you under surveillance? I don't understand Why does he you? follow you about everywhere? Don't ask me. Men do that in this part of the world. They're not used to women going about on their own. They think we're morally lax. They pursue us relentlessly. And systematically. I call this one the changing of the guard. Oh, this is monstrous. I'm not well. I'm ill. Go away. Miss leave Smith. me. Miss Smith, let me help you. Go away. Please tell me the truth. Go away. Get out of here. Gee, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Open the door. You're distressed. What is it? No, I'm not. I'm fine. Yes, you are. I can see now. What's the matter? I insist. Please, both of you, leave me alone. Go away. Leave me alone. If you want me, be at my hotel. Can I offer you a lift, Mr. Brown? I have a taxi waiting outside. I took the liberty of sending it away. Why did you do that? I hope to have the pleasure of driving you home once again. I also wish to talk to you. Shall we go? Very well. It can wait, Mr. Brown. You're in a hurry this evening. Yes, I have an appointment. Well, then, uh, so you can drop me. I pick up a taxi. Uh, not in this part of the town. You're uh, taking a new route this evening. Yes, there's plenty of traffic at this time. Everybody is going home. For all that, you're going very far to the east. We turn again west almost immediately. <laughs> Why are we stopping here? I have something I wish to show you. Well, what is it you wanted to show me? This way? Yeah. Ah! The friend of yours? It's a very good friend of mine. Now you have two. Now we can talk. Thank you. Mr. Brown, I'm a very understanding man. I appreciate your interest in Miss Smith. She is the most interesting young lady. You think so? I do. I ask you not to see her again. I am naturally very disappointed that you have done so. You appear to have distressed her. Oh, but some people have to get hurt for their own good. Yes, that is true. But what is good or bad for Miss Smith is none of your business. But it is yours. There's a very special relationship between Miss Smith and myself which makes it my business. And notice that she has not been happy since she met you. She also seems to have been frightened. She is a frightened lady. I was hoping that you could tell me why. Yes, because she fears you. Oh. But I'm going to make sure that you do not molest her again. I did warn you. I wish that you had listened to me. Oh. Oh.
Ihr Mann mal trauen. Ich nehme euch gut. So. This is Mr. Brown. Has he told you what he was doing at the Gesselkaya? No. Leave him to me. Wait outside. And you are? John. John Drake, I am not smiling. You have no right to visit this country without informing me. Well, I'm only here for a couple of days. It is not only a matter of duty and of courtesy. More important, it is a matter of friendship. Yes, I was hoping you wouldn't find out. No, you have mortified me. Then I apologize, but it just wasn't convenient. So, our friendship has become a matter of your convenience. Very well. If you do not choose to treat me as a friend, I will behave as a policeman. You were arrested an hour ago in this deplorable state. You told my men that you had been set upon by thieves. You said your name was John Brown. I should like to know what did Mr. John Brown, an apparently respectable Briton, was doing in that district. He must have had some business there. What was it? It requires an explanation. So it may, but I can't give you one. Perhaps you would like to tell me why your people are persecuting a member of our embassy staff. Are we? You are having this person followed day and night. I am? I'm asking you. Ah, that's an old trick of yours. You make an accusation, you are really asking a question. Are you? Even if we were, I wouldn't tell you. Jade, the police doctor will patch you up, and then they will drive you back to your hotel. Who told you, doctor? Good night, Mr. Brown. Good night, Colonel. And Mr. Brown, I have to tell you that unless you give us some further explanation of your activities here, we must ask you to leave the country. Please think about it. Yes. Get me the British Embassy. Military Attaches Office. In here? Ah, Major Fortescue. Colonel Nubaralia Seam here. Oh, just a friendly warning. I don't like your spies masquerading on our territory under false names. Yes, that is what I said. Well, he calls himself John Brown, but his name is Drake. Drake, Colonel? Never heard of the fellow. I know what is happening here. I know Co your methods. I have my own sources of information. Colonel, I think you must have made a mistake. We have no Drake here. I know what Drake's job is. But of course, if you disassociate yourself, he will just have to take the consequences. Well, quite right, Colonel. You must deal with this fellow as you see fit. Yes. Bye-bye.
It's me, Masood. Hello, Masood. What is it? We had a slight accident on the way home last night, didn't we, Mr. Bell That old car of yours, I told you you'd drive it too fast. Oh, don't worry, he's got another one, a nice new shiny one. You're not welcome here, Mr. Brown. Please go. But so Why does he get upset when I mention his other car? What car? What are you talking about? I have no idea. Go now. Uh, not just yet. I have something to show Miss Smith first. I've been taking some more photographs. Uh, here's one of his new cars. That must have set you back a penny or two. Is that your car, Masood? Of course not. He parked it outside while he went in to lunch. Now, here's one of Masood having lunch. That must have been one of the occasions when he hadn't eaten for two or three days. In this one, I show his companion. I don't understand you, Mr. Brown. I don't know what you're inferring. Why shouldn't he have lunch with her, whoever she is? Oh, why not, indeed? Well, here they are leaving, getting into the car. Here they are arriving home. Nice place, isn't it? His home or hers? Aha! It's theirs. Here, a nice domestic situation. It's his wife. What an idiot. What an idiot I've been. Very sorry. Please don't be. The time has come to tell the truth, don't you think? Oh, yes, of course I must. What an unbelievable idiot. Would you like to sit down? Can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Well, who are those people? The police. And, of course, Masood must be a police agent. Why are they keeping you under surveillance? They have a hold over me. How did it happen? I'd... Uh, I'd always led such a sheltered life until I came out here. I'd never been exposed to this kind of... ugliness. I'd never seen real poverty. I was shocked. Angry. And then I was lonely, too. It was then that I happened to meet Masood. He made me believe that he was angry, too. Not only angry, but doing something about it. We saw a great deal of each other. Were you in love with him? Whatever that means. Yes. He belonged to an underground political organization who were trying to improve the conditions of the poor. At least, that's what he made me believe. He asked me to help him. They were exciting times. And then, one day, he said he was under suspicion, that he was being watched. He was frightened they were going to search his room. So he installed a safe in here in which to keep his documents. And the police came and found it and bullied you and said that both you and he would spend a long time in prison. They said they would execute Masood for treason. It was so convincing. It was a nightmare. And then this grey-haired man arrived. He was quiet and gentle. And said that if you gave him certain information, there would be no trial and Masood would be safe. They wanted the classified oil figures. Didn't that surprise you? Our companies already supply them with returns. It seems they don't trust them. But you gave them other classified material, didn't you? Anything that came in front of you. Well, once it started, they wanted more and more. And you gave them everything they asked for. They terrorized me. They followed me day and night. I never knew when the phone would ring. Always oh, someone threatening me, reminding me of the... That's him. The gray-haired man. I've got to get out of here. He frightens me. Well, go to my hotel, book yourself a room, and don't make a move until you hear from me. My cards at the corner of the building under the trees by the fountain. Silver grey convertible down you go. Good evening. 
Uh, is Miss Smith in? No, I'm afraid she is not. Then what are you doing here? I was just about to ask you that question. I am from the secret police. Uh, what is your name? Please? Brown. Mr. Brown, may I see your passport? Oh, yes, with pleasure. There it is. Hmm. A journalist. You are a journalist, Mr. Brown? Oh, yes, that's the way I earn my living. Perhaps you supplement your living by other means. Such as? Spy. Ah, no, I think you've uh, got hold of the wrong man. Then that is most unfortunate, because I have specific instructions to see that Mr. John Brown is on the first flight out of this country. There are many John Browns. Not in this city. Uh -huh. And, Mr. Brown, you have a, a plane to catch. Yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll go down with you to police headquarters and I'm going to have a long chat with Colonel Nubar Al-Azim. I'm afraid that would serve no very good purpose. Uh, shall we go, Ahmed? Oh. Well, if, if you like, as you say. Al-Azim. You Brown. could at least have sent for me and told me yourself. I thought you were straight and a friend of mine and I was wrong. Now, you just send for my passport and I'll get out of your way. Your false passport? Yes, my false passport. I've never seen you so angry. What have I done? I suppose you didn't send those two thugs to put me out of the country. Thugs? What are you talking about? Don't you know? No. Is that the truth? Because if it is, it explains a lot of things. I'm telling you the truth, John. Then I have some interesting news for you. There are three foreign agents in this town posing as members of your force. But would they have the impertinence to try and deport you? No. Uh, once they got me in the car, they'd take me to a convenient spot and kill me. There's a photograph of two of them. There's a photograph of an accomplice. I have his address. You do? Then let's visit him before he changes it. Hey, John? <laughs> Wish to see me, Mr. Brown. Oh, yes, please. In time. Oh, may I return the compliment? I'm surprised that you've been so foolish as to come here, Mr. Brown. I'm sorry to expose you in front of Miss Smith. Uh, no personal animosity, I assure you. It's on my part, there is. Why have you not left the country? I assume that you're one of Colonel Al Azim's men. Yes. But you must surely know that the penalties for spying in this country are extremely severe. Yes, yes, I believe they impose the death penalty. Maksud Badawis. Now, we have to find out who he was working for. Don't worry. When we get him back to headquarters, my men will soon make him talk. Somebody else had the same idea. They killed him because they knew our powers of persuasion down here. If I had just one of their men, I would squeeze the last atom of truth out of him. Yes, I can imagine. Oh, nothing brutal, John. We're a modern force now. We have all the latest methods. Not so satisfying, but surer. 
Yes, just one of them. No, they won't show themselves now that they've gone into hiding. We must set a trap. What do we use for bait? Right now, they're thinking if they can get rid of the girl and me, there'll be no one to identify them and they'll be in the clear. They're not coming running into a trap with you as bait, John. No. But they might with the girl. They'll still think they have a hold over her. You're right. Well, how do we set the trap? Her apartment. They'll still be watching it. It's their only means of contacting her. Now, because they're frightened, they'll make an extremely cautious approach. Your men mustn't show till the very last second. Of course. Shall I bring her in? Yes. Very well. I'll bring it at home. Yeah, and it's, it's better if I see her alone. You will tell her how you intend to use her? Of course. Is that necessary? It is, as far as I'm concerned. She may have been stupid, but she's angry now and she has courage. This is a chance for her to level up. I think she'll take it. Uh, come in, Miss Smith. Do sit down. Uh, Miss Smith, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Your police friends are not police at all. They are foreign agents. Oh, no. Oh, I've made a dreadful mess of everything, haven't I? I swear I didn't know. I loathe myself. Would you like another chance? Isn't it too late now? No. But it does involve a certain amount of danger. Please. I'll do anything. That's what I thought you'd say. Albinto Rajagan. this way, would you please? How do you feel? Very frightened. Keep your chin up. Aha. Now, 
Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Come in, Nuba. Come in, Nuba. Hello, John. I can hear you. Your people ready? All in position. The Smith is here. All we can do is wait. Come fast when I call you. We can be with you in two minutes. Good. Stand by. See a car coming. False alarm. It's only a young couple. one of their men. He's just checking that everything is safe. They have lookouts. Either end of the street. The man opposite is signaling that everything is all clear. Shouldn't be long now. Right. Ach, we are home in the For him. Smith, you have been betrayed. We must get you away from here at once. I'm not coming with you. Oh, yes, you are. Look, they will ship you home and put you in prison. I won't come. Chufar Ura, Mikhaza. So you got me one? Yes, and there are two more locked in the lift. Would you send somebody upstairs to close the door? Oh, sorry. Why feel it back?
اخرج Yes. You sure? I'm fine. You know something? I feel like a drink. Well, I um, I can only offer you sherry. 